Let's go and rig this rifle today. It is an F44 AA pulse rifle from Alien Romulus. And uh, this is for my buddy Deviant, who was going to rig this and he wasn't quite sure where to begin. And I thought, hey, this is a really nice showcase project. Maybe I'll share this with all of you. So I've just went ahead and did this as a test. Turns out I did it a little bit wrong. But what we can do here is we can go and slide this back piece in and out. I'm sure this is not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I didn't know that at the time. There's two flaps at the back here that I've rigged up that can go in and out like this on either side. And I've also rigged up this little sight mirror that can go up and down. And then I've also gone ahead and put all these adjustments into one handy place so that users just need to select the top node of the pulse rifle and then they can go ahead uh, and get that done. We're going to go and rig this up in Dash Studio or for, yeah, in Dash Studio, but we're going to use Blender for a little bit of help creating the face groups because I think that is, uh, that's just so much nicer. In fact, here is a little video of how this thing is supposed to work. So these flaps, they move up and down. And then this thing slides out. And then this is what this thing looks like when it's expanded. And then that little button, let's go and rig that button up as well. Uh, let's go up and down and then we'll see. So these two flaps and then that thing is hinged at the bottom here. So this is going to be a bone and these are going to be two bones. And then we're not going to do the slidey bit, but you're going to understand why and how that happens. And I think what I'm also going to rig up is the trigger here so that you can go and squeeze it or that people can at least move the trigger with a slider. And of course, the little sight thing at the top. So let's get started. I'm going to use this model here from Ostab Herniak, who's modeled this and it's available on ArtStation. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to, you know, if you wanted to follow along. So let's go and start a brand new file in Das Studio and also go into Blender and literally just bring in what is available in the download that I've got here. So it's an OBJ and that's fine. I'm not going to split this. I'd like to have that as one cohesive object and this comes in probably a little bit too large. Yes, in fact, so large that if we slide this out, we can see it's currently 1,144 meters long. That's probably not as long <laughs> as it's supposed to be in reality, probably imported with the wrong scale. So S0.01, and that then becomes 11 meters long on the X. That's still a little long. So S0.1 to scale it down so that it's about 1 meter 14. Yeah, that's sort of, that is more, that is more like it, isn't it? Let's do that. So X, uh, Y, and Z in meters. So one meter fourteen. I can I can sort of see that's a big thing. So let's let's leave it there for the scale. I'm gonna go and look at this from the side quickly and bring this up just a bit. So G Z and I'll go and bring this up to here because that means as we export it, the pivot point is going to be at the bottom and fairly in the center rather than in the middle of the object. One other thing that I'm going to do, this is currently the viewport color probably suggests this is now completely black. So let's go and change that. In fact, down here on the material, we only have one material called wire. That's fine. If we scroll down here into the viewport display, then the current color is set to black. And I'm going to just go and make that a bit lighter, sort of something like that. That's good. I'm assuming at this point that the UV unwrapping has already happened. Let me just go and control A and apply all transforms here and see in the UV editing tab, see what's what's happened here. If I go into face mode and then select everything, then yeah, I can see this thing is completely unwrapped and that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. But to get this thing ready for prime time in Dash Studio, in fact, we're gonna go and have to set up face groups or in what Blender calls vertex groups. And this is gonna be essentially a geometry selection that Dash Studio or any other program, if you wanna be pedantic about it, can go and use a skeleton to move these particular selections. But currently, if we go onto this uh, flux capacitor icon here, we see we don't have any vertex groups. So we're gonna have to go and set those up from scratch. And that's fine, we can do that. Let's go and tap into edit mode. I'm gonna use face mode here and deselect everything. And I'm gonna have a think about what needs to become a separate face group for rigging. So we've got this 
flap at the back here, these two flaps, they need to become two separate groups so that each of them can have a bone and that each bone can control this. So if I go and hover and select click L, then this is going to go and select all of that. This and that needs to also be selected. So L two times and that is going to be one face group. Let's call that one flap left. So that's uh, here on face groups on sorry vertex groups i'm going to go and click the plus sign to create one double tap into group and call that left flap and then i'm going to have to go and assign what i've just selected here so assign that and then i can go and deselect things when i go and press select then this is going to come back so let's do the same with the other flap here so hover over this press l to select anything that is connected these pieces as well are going to be added to that new group and we're going to call that one right flap and that's you know already a good good starting point so now as i've seen from the video this whole bit at the back also needs to be a bone so not these flaps but this thing in the middle here and this thing at the bottom so let's go and look at this from the side and just go and mark with ghost mode here mark all this off so that this is going to become part of one group that looks that doesn't look so bad i like it uh, i'll do that with alt z that's going into an out of ghost mode or you can also click this icon at the top here or x-ray mode as they call it i think uh, zbrush calls it ghost mode so not everything has been selected so this whole thing at the bottom needs to be selected hover over that press l and then that gets selected this is also part of it press l on that and then i think the screw we can probably we might as well leave the use the screw as well that's a that's a cool idea there are these these end caps here on the screw here i'll go and select those as well so that means as we rotate this the screw will also rotate with it so that's kind of cool so i don't want the flaps to be part of my selection so i can go and just click on these and then say deselect so that's going to be subtracted from my selection or so i thought yeah no that didn't work because <laughs> <laughs> what a shame i've uh, i've not actually assigned the faces for the right flap there that is uh, that is a shame isn't it so great well, let's go and do this all again then um and just go and start with that <laughs> sorry about this i don't do this very often so this is the right flap right so you've got to say assign before this can go any further so select yep perfect and that's also going to be perfect great so let's go and do this again so in ghost mode alt z let's select all of this alt z and we just go and hover and press L until we have all the other pieces selected here. Repetition makes perfect, doesn't it? So there we go. Now I can go and remove, deselect the left flap from that and deselect the right flap from that. And then what we're left with is sort of the back bit, I guess. Let's in fact call that the back bit. And for heaven's sake, assign it. <laughs> there we go so that's that in my version i had also made this thing slide in and out but it looks like that is not necessary so that should give us everything we need here so one other thing i'd like to set up is perhaps the trigger so deselect everything then hover over the trigger and press l and that's going to be the trigger turn that into a group trigger and then assign very important and then the other one other bit at the top here was the site so deselect everything hover over that press l and then all these pieces are going to become part of what we can go and rig up in das studio to go up and down so that should be enough for that you, i'm going to show you quickly also how you can do this in das studio directly but i just find the selection tools are not as intuitive and as visible as we have it here so with all this in place let's tap out of edit mode and just go and save this as a blend file and then go and export this into das studio so that we can use it so i've got it on a shortcut here but really it's under file export and then wavefront obj and that's what we're going to need for this I'll just call this pulse rifle in my downloads folder here and I'm going to use one as my export scale and then down here I'm going to go and uh, select vertex groups so that this is actually going to become part of the file that's important let's hit export and see what das studio thinks about this 
So file import here. And then I'm going to go into here, pulse rifle, open that up. And as my import scale, I'm going to use the modo scale. So that is meters. Therefore, it'll it'll work. So under custom, I'm going to pick modo because, you know, not, not Blender, for heaven's sake. Don't use Blender <laughs> because that's an old preset. So let's go do this. And this, there's our rifle. So that doesn't look so bad. So to prove that these things have actually come across, let's head over here to our geometry editor and then select the tool settings. And we're going to have a look at the face groups here. Oops, actually with the object selected. There we go. Here they are. And this is exactly what we've set up in Blender. We've also got a like a singular group that is basically everything else. It's just going to be called off and that's, you know, that's fine. But everything else is highlights up in red, just like we wanted it to do. So this is the back bit. This is the left flap, the right flap, and this is the site up here. And then this is the trigger. Perfect.